I do have a question because, like I said, that is golden era. Then it stops. You're on the inside there. Why did it? Why did it end up stopping? Why? Why did like gas digital like that whole the the roast masters that s- show stop? stop well, happening? the stand uh, closed for about a year. They moved. Yeah. So they uh, went to a new location. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tried it, I think, at another location once or twice, mm-hmm. and it just wasn't the same. The stand wouldn't have the show back. Oh, I'm sure they would have it back, but there was like a year break. I see. And they tried doing it at, I think, like St. Mark's Comedy Club. I think they tried to do it somewhere else. Yeah. And it just didn't have the same feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and a show like that needs, like, mm-hmm. energy. Yeah. So, and it just, it, it wasn't right. And I think they just felt like maybe, not that the bubble burst, mm-hmm. but the time was the time to move on. Yeah. And they were doing Comedy Fight Club by then. Yeah. The which other was kind of being used as a feeder system. Mm-hmm. And I think the decision was made was just like, let those guys do that mm-hmm. and let them have it. And, you know, they can run with the ball on it. Sure. Now there's three. There's three roast battles, yeah. at least in New York, because there's yeah. Comedy Fight Club that they got at. I forgot. I forgot the name of their venue that they do it at. Then they got Grove 34 does does whatever it's called. I forgot. Mm-hmm. And then there's the one at New York Comedy Club. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and they all kind of intertwine, kind of similar in, in L.A. They yeah. There's just there. not. I, I it's one of my pet peeves. There'll be people that have battled each other already, mm-hmm. and they reuse all the same jokes. At a different show. At a different show. Mm. And that bugs me because the whole point of this thing mm-hmm. is, A, a writing exercise. Yep. And, B, it's about being in the moment. Yep. So if you're redoing it, mm-hmm. it's so phony to me. Of and, like, it's against the point of the whole reason to do it. Well, if people the, get uh, caught up with the wins and losses... And, and uh, again, I'm going to bring up professional wrestling a million times. <laughs> it's that's a good comparison. The only yeah. way my brain works. <laughs> it's pro yeah. wrestling. It's not about who wins and loses. Yeah. It's about getting both of you over. For sure, for sure. And then somebody, what? What is it? It's a. Is it a shoot match? What is that called when it turns real? Oh yeah, that's a shoot. I've seen it. I've seen a few shoots. Yeah. Uh, and, in real and in real wrestling. What in real wrestling? No, it roast. <laughs> okay, yeah. I've seen the people turn on each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw two guys accuse each other of stealing each other's jokes yep. on stage and have a meltdown. Mm-hmm. At the stand, there was a kid who will remain nameless <laughs> who started crying. Cry- on stage? On stage and ran, did not finish the battle, ran out the door. I'm assuming they didn't post that one. Nope. There's a few, there's a number that have not been posted. Sure. Yeah. Because that's a tough, it's a, not only are you bombing. Yeah. It's a competition. So now you're bombing with somebody who could be doing good Mm -hmm. and you're being judged by a jury of who are most likely your peers in the industry. So it's one thing to bomb. It's another thing to bomb in front of Rich Voss and Bob Kelly, who, you know, I grew up watching. Of course. And there's nothing in the world more I want than their respect. (laughs) Yeah. And then to go up there and, eat, you know, fucking suck a fat one. It's it's a tough feeling. That is brutal. That is brutal. Would you? I mean, obviously, you would do judging again. Would you ever think about stepping in the ring? And if the, if I the situation was right, I would battle under the right circumstances. We did a thing for a little while where we were doing competitive um, uh, topic roasting, spit roast, spit roast. Yes, I really liked that. And the way I was pitching it to people when they weren't sure if they wanted to do it, I was mm-hmm. like, "It's monologue jokes." Yeah, that's all you're doing is any of these jokes could be on late night whatever sure. it's, that's the format yeah they're one-liner monologue jokes mm-hmm. and i really like that but i don't think it really caught on yeah so were you taking point on that because I, I watched all those when they when that came out uh were you taking point like as a kind of a producer on that show nope i was just i was participating when i participated mm-hmm. um but i really liked the idea yeah it just didn't didn't connect with people the same way yeah something about it it kind of I watched a few of them, and sometimes they would you, they would still lean into the roast battle Yeah. You would see it, like, happen. They would, like, throw a jab at the other person, and you're like, yeah, it's... Do you do you feel like that was helpful or against it? Because you would... It, I liked it. Yeah. As long as it was done in the right nature. Sure. Uh, like, me and Aaron kind of got into it a little. Oh, Aaron yeah. Berg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we did it, and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But that's also because me and Aaron can do that to each other. A, we know mm-hmm. each other for over a decade. B, I think we're both confident enough on stage mm-hmm. that we can fuck around. Sure. 
I think some people maybe when it's not the intention could get their feelings hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I got to ask you, I want to ask you about uh, Skink Fest and the roast of, of Luis J. Gomez. You hosted it, killed it up top. Um, one, I think one of the best like roast ofs ever next to like the boss roast maybe is like one of my favorite ones to just watch just because, I mean, it was like every other person that would take the mic. You hear the crowd chanting that person's name if, if the joke kills. Um, how did it feel to be asked to do that, and, and what was the experience like? Just so Lou is one of my show? closest friends. We do a podcast together yeah. for eight nine years now. Yeah, um, I was really excited about that one, but it also kind of, in a weird way, felt like a coming out party for me as a a, a performer on roast, not just battles. Because mm. one that was uh, one of my first times actually being on a dais. Yeah. Until then, I've always just been a writer. Sure. Um, I was very nervous. And then, yes, the crowd was biased because it was Skank Fest and they're all there for us. Mm-hmm. But there's not a really good shot in the entire thing of how big it was. Because mm. that was um, a thousand seats. For that, that for stage? That. that was a parking lot that they converted into a venue with a tent. So that was a thousand seats. Then there was fences up. The streets were filled with people. Yeah. So there was probably another eight to nine hundred people around. Mm. And then it was in public. So there were just people walking by that stopped and watched the whole thing. Sure. Uh, and it, the magnitude of it was very intimidating. Sure. Uh, but I was pretty I was pretty psyched on that one. That that was an honor to be on it, mm-hmm. uh, especially with, you know, you look at who was on that dais. Yeah. Um. And the fact that I even held my own uh, meant a lot. And I, I do think I got a lot of good ones in on that one. You had a lot of great ones in. If you but I've also roasted Lewis like five times on other things. <laughs> sure. So I, I kind of had a greatest hits collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had a blast on that one. That was so, and what a what a group of people to be, even on the uh, Soder, List, Jay, Hinchcliffe, mm-hmm. Ari, mm-hmm. Shane. That was fucking absolutely nuts. Insane. Yes. Um, if you had any advice to give to people just starting roast battles as a guy who's been doing it for forever, had some of the biggest videos ever, ever in this stupid, like subgenre of comedy, what would you say to people that are like starting off, you know, maybe they haven't done a battle yet. Maybe they only did one or two. What, what, what would you say to them? Okay. I, I actually went through this, uh, last night talking to a young comic, <laughs> uh, a, f- a few little things. Mm-hmm. The, the biggest one that I'll give to people is that uh, good roast jokes Mm -hmm. are equations. Mm -hmm. Much like the uh, analogies on the SATs. This is to this, is that is to that. Mm -hmm. That's where the funny is. Is finding the relationships between this and this and that and that. Mm -hmm. So what I will say is uh, write backwards. Don't kill yourself on the premise Mm. and then try to figure out a funny punchline for it. Figure out something funny then figure out what premise applies to it because you can get there sure uh the other thing i like um a little cheat code uh it's something that dana gould said about the simpsons where they for years were trying to write a joke where the punchline and the setup had all the same words Mm. and a cheat code for me is try and use as many of the same words from the setup and the punchline in a different order. Mm. So for me, like I battled Eric Bergstrom Mm -hmm. and Eric's mom's homeless. And I knew I would say something about that. And I knew he would say there's a running thing that my mom works at the, my mom does work at the Olive Garden. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I did a joke about that. Then I knew I was going to get hit with an Olive Garden joke. Yeah. So then I said, yeah, Eric, you know, my mom works at the Olive Garden. I'm still homeless. My mom serves unlimited soup and salad. Your mom tosses salad at soup kitchens. Nerd. (laughs) <laughs> right <It's laughs> however at, many gonna laugh on the side there however great. many words you can sneak <laughs> in from the premise yeah because then you're almost you get to wear the cleverness as a little cape mm-hmm. uh, and then people are like oh i see what you did there mm-hmm. and then it kind of takes the meanness out yeah so people aren't like oh he insulted his friend no he said something clever that happened to be a thing about his friend sure Sure. And the most important thing, and the other thing I'll say, you got to laugh at the other person. Mm. One of the biggest mistakes is when people like mean mug 
or like don't laugh or be like whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, then if that other person's not funny, fifty percent of the reason the people in that audience are there is mm-hmm. worthless. Sure, because we just paid to see somebody not funny. Or I, I and I fell into this trap at the beginning mm-hmm. is you do jokes where you call the other person unfunny or a hack. Mm. Because then you're telling the audience they wasted their time on seeing someone that doesn't know how to do comedy. Mm. But if you build each other up and laugh at each other, mm-hmm. uh, and I've given this advice, I, I wrote on a, uh, I've written on sports roasts as well. Mm-hmm. And I always go, guys, big reactions. This isn't real. Mm-hmm. And the more fun you're having, the more fun they're having. And your state is a reflection of them. So if two people are bombing, but they're laughing and having fun, their audience is still going to go, that was a great show. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. There it is. That's three delicious points from one of the masters. So I hope I hope it didn't sound pretentious. No, it was great. That's why that's why I, wa- I wanted to hear it, you know. I think a lot of people need to hear cuz they're going to people need to evolve out of this guy looks like a pedophile at, at some yeah. point, right? Well, here's the thing. There's two what, what is it? It's 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 if you're me and you're fat and ugly, mm-hmm. you're a rapist. Mm-hmm. Or if you're handsome, you're a date rapist. Mm. And that's the joke every time. Mm-hmm. You know, or yeah, if you have anything about you, you're a pedophile. If you mm-hmm. you know, um, there is like, there's certain tropes you got to get away from. Mm-hmm. Also, like, and Mike gave us this advice too: like, avoid the, the puns everyone's done, killed, bombed, sure. murdered, the, and then try compare it to a tragedy. Sure. You know, it's just been done a bazillion times. Try and find a detail mm. that's more visceral. Like when I battled Patrick, mm-hmm. it was right after... Uh, the 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 pulse shootings. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the nightclub shootings. Uh, the nightclub in Florida, the mm-hmm. at the gay bar, and instead of, I I did a joke about it because he's from Florida, uh, but instead of you you know shot or killed or make a a a, a lowbrow gay joke, mm-hmm. I said Patrick's career is the saddest thing to come out of Florida since fifty coffins with rainbow flags <laughs> folded on them, because now you gave people <laughs> the yep. visual. Which is a very horrific thing, mm-hmm. but it's a gut punch. For sure. As opposed to me saying, you know, something about guns, mm-hmm. which is a given. Yeah. It's the go the or, ju- or just saying Pulse nightclub shooting, right? Like a more, that's a yeah. more illustrated version of that. It's a yes. more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to. There's a, uh, and I think LA is better at this than New York. The whimsical part of it, like mm. the, the, Colorful language, paint a picture, have fun. Mm-hmm. I think L.A. I mean, because I always thought when we were doing it simultaneously, L.A. was for performers mm-hmm. and New York was for writers. Yeah. L.A. put on the bigger show. Mm-hmm. New York put on the bigger writer showcase. Mm-hmm. Try and find the happy medium. Sure. That was so great to watch that unfold from as a fan point of view, just to see the two go at each other. And it's so funny. Sometimes one was worked and sometimes the other one didn't work. And it was just, I don't know, there's something beautiful about it. So I love that the whole league is like doing that now. And we're kind of getting that instead of just like an East Coast, West Coast thing. Everyone's kind of melding together and the whole thing is changing. Yeah, now, it's nowadays. really cool what everybody's doing. 